Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently working on the Vostok flight here and I've already put it out on the pad and collected the data that we can at home that brought us up to 13.6 we're going to need to upgrade our astronaut complex I had forgotten about that because we do need to actually be able to EVA the reason that that is a thing is because there's no like recovery plan for the Vostok capsule the recovery plan is the pilot bails out and parachutes down. That is the recovery plan. Which is mildly insane. Now, as you can see, I built this rocket. It's got a few issues. And we'll go over those issues in a moment. But let me just pull up here the actual rocket in question. Obviously, ours bears little resemblance. Right? There's no doubt about that. We don't have the ability to create, create these sort of tapered tanks at this point. We'll get there, but we don't have that just yet. So we're going with something that is vaguely similar, but not exactly the same. We also don't have access to fairings yet, so we're just sticking our onion re-entry module up at the top. Now, this has a couple of problems. One, we have no struts on here, and we don't have the ability to get struts yet. That's a bit of an issue. Two, these are basic fins. They are not control surfaces. Three. Once we get up here, we have no way to orient this upper stage because this pug actually does not have access to any gimbling. So we're going to actually have to ditch the pug and we're going to have to use a less efficient engine like the swivel engine. Yeah, that's actually what is the specific impulse here at, C at vacuum 320 versus 270. So, I mean, obviously we, if I go back into engines here, obviously we want to have the 330 from the puck, right? But honestly, 320 isn't that much worse for the swivel. We're going to run a swivel engine up here, but ultimately we don't want to run an engine up here at all. We want to run more like uh, RCS packs up here. But for now, this will have to do to give us some ability to orient this thing in space. And beyond that, lack of struts is going to be our biggest issue, I think, at this point. Let's put this thing out on the pad. As I said, I already collected the pad science. And we know that we're going to have an issue as well with getting science off of this thing. The Vostok is not well designed for retrieval of science in KSP. Now, I don't blame the Soviets for that. They probably did not have retrieving KSP science high on their list of priorities. <laughs> but this is not well designed for that. The Mercury capsules will be much better for that. No doubt about that one. So for now, we're just going to have to lift this thing, like, basically straight off of the ground. This is going to be very interesting. It's going to be wiggly. And when we try to go horizontally... I have a feeling we're going to have a big old bend right around here. We'll see how that ends up going, but my bet is not well. Okay, let's lift this thing off and see what we've got. Oh, look at those wiggles. We're definitely going to grab what data we can here, and we'll try to transmit some of it back. Emphasis on try. I think we should try to make as small of a... Ooh, this is awful. Look at that bend. That is horrible. Okay. Well. This is interesting. <laughs> I think this is indicating that we're over gimp down here on the bottom. Yeah, that's definitely indicating that. We're trying to recover this, but no, there's no recovering. We're in a flat spin. So we're just going to have Jeb hop out of here once he can, or we'll try to land this. That's a theoretical option. So as expected, we have a big rigidity issue here. I'm deeply unsurprised by that. Deeply, deeply unsurprised by that rigidity issue. I'm not going to attempt to recover this thing. Well, I am going to attempt to recover it. But we have a big rigidity issue here for sure. Struts are going... Oh, we're coming in this direction. 
Okay, that is very exciting. We're gonna have Jeb EVA here then. And deploy your chute there, Jeb. Jeb bails on out, and that thing is going away. Jeb is fine though. Jeb is absolutely fine. So I guess we can consider this a test of the abort system, which is literally just the pilot bails out. That's literally the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll consider that a test of the abort system. Actually, we can grab this EVA report. Flying low. So that seems fine. And Jeb is just like, screw this. I'm heading home. Good for you, Jeb. Yeah, I wouldn't mind... Yeah, this is fine. We're just going to head back this direction. And we'll recover Jeb. I doubt any of that survived. I highly doubt it. So we know that we have a spaghetti problem. Right? Right? No doubt about that. A spaghetti problem is definitely a thing that we have. So we're going to have to collect enough science to get some struts before we can really proceed here. I think that's very, very clear. Is Jeb actually going to make it back to shore? It kind of looks like it, especially if he works on getting some altitude here. Yeah, I think Jeb is indeed going to make it back to shore. Congrats on making it back to shore, Jeb. He really did not want to swim. <laughs> okay, so he's going to need to get down to the ground eventually. He's got a lot of horizontal speed right now, and we're picking some up because we're currently falling. We need to ditch some of this momentum. So we're trying to ditch the momentum by gaining altitude here. That's the goal. So by gaining altitude, we're killing our horizontal momentum. And there we go. Jeb has survived. So Jeb is going to be recovered. And hopefully we got enough out of that flight to get ourselves struts. That would be ideal. If we have struts, I think we get this thing to orbit easily. I do think that we're definitely a little bit over gimbaled. We could, but at the same time, we're under gimbaled. It, we need control surfaces. <laughs> That's what we really need there. So we did not get any science from that. What? Why did we not get science? Jeb collected some. Interesting. I expected us to get science from that. So what do we actually need? We need 45 for this. For the e EAS-4 strut connector. Hmm. I'm wondering here. Do we have an option? Yield science per reputation. What I'm looking for here is science per funds. Yes. This. So we could invest, say, 250000 into this. Oh, we can't do more than 25% commitment. Right. So we could do 228000 here. And that would net us... How much science would this actually be? It doesn't technically say. So I guess we would need to run a calculation. 228500 And then divide that by 12209.78. This would yield us 18 science. That's not great, is it? No, that's really not great. That would not get us struts. That would get us general rocketry, but I don't think that's... I mean, the, the T-200 would save us some money. We'd want it eventually. No, I think what we need to do is we need to just be more careful with that launch. I think that's what this comes down to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to un-gimbal these guys. So all of these guys are going to be gimbal locked. Or actually, I'm going to gimbal free them, but we're going to turn them down to about 10% of their gimbal limit. And then we're going to go straight up here. We just got to go straight on up. We, without struts, we can't really do a gravity turn. That's definitely something we learned from that last flight. Now, to be clear, 
we don't have to succeed each one of these flights, right? Uh, that's obviously not something that we're going to be doing. In reality, they had a bunch of test flights, uncrewed test flights, crewed by various animals, dogs, monkeys, things like that. And that's kind of what we're doing here at this point. We only get paid, though, when we get a success. We only get paid when we get a success. So off we go. We're going to go basically straight up here. We could grab this data, but I, there really isn't much of a point, is there? Unless we make it into space. If we make it into space, we can return some of this data. So we can see we're drifting off of the up direction, the up vector here a little bit. But for now, I'm just letting it drift. I'm not inputting anything. I want to get through these thicker portions of the atmosphere before we attempt to gravity turn. So we're going to attempt to gravity turn at maybe an apoapsis of like 40 or 50 kilometers. Hang on, that's a full on tumble. Okay, so this is the problem that we were having with Sputnik, which is surprising to me. I guess our thrust to weight makes its way up here. Intriguing. Can we rotate around to 90 here? Okay, let's turn the gimbal limit up here. Nope, that's way over gimbaled. Okay. Ooh. This thing is really bendy. <laughs> that's incredibly clear. This thing is so, 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 so bendy. Okay. Can we at least get some sort of a suborbital flight? Oh, boy. Yeah, it's... We can't turn up our gimbaling without it bending all over the place, and we can't hold attitude without turning up the gimbaling. That's the issue here. And it's right in this thickest portion of the atmosphere here. Okay. So that's what we've got then. That's fine. So this thing's going to oscillate around a bit. And I mean, we did manage to hit 21 kilometers, but that's just the aerodynamic tumbling at this point. That is the whole issue. 1000% of the issue there. Here's a question though. If we grab a crew report, temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, and a mystery goo observation here, can we recover this? without a parachute. We've got about seven seconds of burn time. Our surface speed is kind of hovering. I don't know if we can pull this off, but if we can get this science, that would actually be very, very beneficial for us. We're automatically holding retrograde here, and this engine is definitely powerful enough. We can see our thrust to weight is seven. So we're just going to eyeball this a bit. We're only moving at 270 meters per second right now. And we are slowing down. Getting this information would be phenomenal for us. So actual recovery of the craft is kind of important. Turns out, at least in KSB. I'm going to start this burn at, I think two kilometers. Okay. And we'll just gently slow it on down here. Cool. We'll let this drop for a bit. And let's slow it on down. If we can recover this, this is huge. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. So at this point, Jeb is going to EVA and grab an EVA report and hop back in. So the idea here, 
Hop back in, Jeb. There you go. The idea here is we recover this vessel. That gives us the science from a recovered flight here to actually get what we need. This is huge. This is what we really, really needed here. It's weird that the Soviets ditched the entire rocket. <laughs> KSP is not really built for that, I think. In my opinion, KSP is not built for that. So, that's exciting. But yeah, 39.7 science out of that. So we managed to pull it off. That's great. And that's our first splash down into the ocean, too. So that's wonderful. So we absolutely grab general construction here. What does that allow us to do? Well, that allows us to go into the VAB and put on struts. Just struts is going to fix so many problems here. So many problems. So I'm going to put on quad struts down here, simply strutting these guys to the, to the regular fuselage. And then we're going to grab struts here as well. And I want to strut them up to like this decoupler. But I'm also going to strut us from the top here, straight into here. So basically, all we're trying to do is tell the game, don't bend all over the place. <laughs> That's the goal. Now that we have struts, I'm much more confident in this. Let's see about getting our first Kerbal into orbit. Okay. I'm actually kind of excited about this now that we're not going to be bending the rocket from the force of the gimballing. To be clear, that might still happen a little bit. We may have to adjust the strutting, but I'm fairly certain that this is going to be stable now. So we're going to bring this guy on up, and off we go. Are these set to gimbal limit 10? Yes, let's crank those on up. These are not collected, but we're not actually expecting to collect any science from this if we manage to make it into space. Okay, let's head on over a little bit. Oh, this is so much more stable. It's amazing what a little bit of strutting does. Wow. Now we still don't have a reaction wheel or RCS system. So actually being in space is going to be mildly awkward for us. Hello. Okay, we're still tumbling back this way, apparently. Well, we'll bring this on around and fire up those engines again. Cool. And we're on our way to space. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we're trying to tumble again. This is something that control surfaces would help with. Okay, so it would appear that we're not ready yet for a standard gravity turn. That definitely does appear to be the case. Cool. So with us being not yet ready for a standard gravity turn, that does mean that we're gonna have to be a little bit more cautious with this, but this is already so much more controllable. That is a massive, massive improvement. Now, we don't have fuel ducting yet, so these still are coming off at strange times. No doubt about that. But we are now officially in orbit. We're going to let this tumble around. Well, we're not officially in orbit. We're officially in space. Okay, we'll ditch those guys. Okay, and now we have no way to control this tumble until such a time. I don't suppose that's going to come around and hit us. No, until such a time as we fire up this engine. But what we can do is we can let this tumble until we hit space. And we only have 564 meters per second. So with those tumbles, we definitely don't have the capability to get this into orbit yet. But what we can do is we can grab all of this data. There we go. And we can grab, I'm actually going to freeze our rotation here. We can grab an EVA report and hop back in. And we can try to grab this suborbital data. That on its own will be a big step forward. 
because we're still missing important tech to make this happen. No doubt about that. We performed a spacewalk in orbit of Kerbin. The real question is, is Jeff going to survive this? The answer is, I don't know. I don't know if we can recover this. If we had parachutes on it, we could, but the Soviets did things weird. Like, really, really weird. We're heading back down, and this will automatically orient us retrograde, which is what we want, but we're coming in pretty fast. We're going to have to burn off our... We're going to have to burn off our speed pretty quickly here. We're accelerating at this time. Still accelerating. Okay, now we're starting to decelerate. G-force is really creeping up here. Okay, this is looking good. This is looking good for recovery. There's stuff blowing up. Yes, that is definitely true. There's various bits hitting the ocean, apparently. I hear them, anyway. Okay, that must be the last one that just disappeared. So, I'm going to start this burn at one kilometer. And let's decelerate. Okay. And then we'll just gently bring this on in. I said gently bringing it on in. Okay. All according to plan. Beautiful. <laughs> Good flying, Jeb. Good flying. So that is going to be a lot of science for us. That's a good suborbital flight. Now, this is definitely a bit off the rails from what happened in history. Vostok 1 made it into orbit, but they also had tech that we don't. So that's, that's certainly a thing that happened. So we're going to take that suborbital flight. We were attempting an orbital flight, but that is going to net us a lot of science. What science can we, or rather, what tech can we get out of this that will make this flight a lot more possible? Well, we'll find out. To be clear, if we weren't trying to go with this Vostok design, we would have made it by now. But here we are. So we got 51 science out of that. And that means that we could grab, say, general rocketry. We could grab aviation if we wanted control surfaces. I mean, tail fins are really big, but that's definitely a thing we could do. But I think we need to take flight control here. That gives us access to the P re-entry module, which we're going to need not in the Vostok flights, but that does give us access to a small inline reaction wheel, which would be very, very good, as well as giving us access to winglets. So I think that is an incredibly important aspect of this. So we're going to hop into the VAB, and we're going to upgrade this thing with that fancy new tech that we've got. First things first, we're going to add in a small inline reaction wheel up here. Now, the reaction wheel is going to be power limited. So I'm actually going to toss in some extra batteries here so that we can transmit back some of this data as well. And unfortunately, these are all going to be destroyed on impact, but that's just the way the Vostok lander, or not really lander, the Vostok launcher worked. So we're going to toss in a reaction wheel up here so that we can actually orient ourselves in space, and that will do. Phenomenal. So now we'll be able to transmit back our data now that we've got that. And now the question is, can we get there using our fancy upgraded winglets? So like Delta Deluxe winglets. These are way, way bigger than what the actual <laughs> launcher used. No doubt about that. But they're also very Kerbal. So we'll go with that, we'll save this, and we're going to launch this bad boy. This will eventually get us to space, and I think this will be the one. I hope. So let's load this on up. As soon as it loads, we'll head on off. And yeah, I think the lack of control surfaces was why we couldn't really do the gravity turn that I wanted to do there. So off we go. Wait, did I change this? No, I did not. Let's turn that gimbal limit on up. And up we go. So this time we're angling to not have tumbles. That's the goal here. Okay, let's start heading a bit down this direction. Things are definitely improving. No doubt about that. We're just very 
slowly heading over. I'm trying to remain within the prograde circle here. With those control surfaces, hopefully we won't have a tumble. That's the goal. Oh, hello. We're tumbling a bit. I'm trying to correct it. I'm kind of succeeding. Kind of. We're definitely off nominal right now. Okay. Control surface is definitely helping with that one. Apoapsis is reasonably up there. We're heading on over towards the horizon at this point. I think we're high enough that we don't need to worry too much about aero forces here. Beautiful. So I'm parking here for right now. We do need to bring up our apoapsis a little bit more. Okay. And that's what we've got. That's interesting. I didn't think we added all that much more weight. So we're still lacking a little bit of delta V here, it seems. Bonk. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely lacking a little bit of delta V. No doubt about that one. So, how do we want to go about it? Well, at this point, rather than... Well, we could recover it and grab the data again. That's going to take a while, though. I'm going to revert this back to vehicle assembly. We'll deduct the cost, and we'll just say we're, we recovered it, and we didn't get any additional science out of it. So, like, 24,000, we'll say. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, there we go. So, we want to add a little bit more... A little bit more Delta V into this thing. No doubt about that. I'm going to double our fuel tanks here in this upper stage. And then beyond that, I'm going to add in an additional fuel tank out here. I would absolutely love it. Oh, wow. These turned very awkwardly. Okay, there we go. I would absolutely love it if we were able to run fuel out through here. But actually, these radial, radial decouplers, we could allow fuel flow, right? In theory, but that I don't think it works that way, sadly. So that puts us at 1.4 thrust to weight. We should upgrade these valiants at this point up to probably something along the lines of swivels. Not mounted like that. So that puts us at 2.09 thrust to weight. So we've got a lot of additional headroom here. Let's add in something along the lines of a T400 in the center core. 1.98. Even that's still pretty high. Cool. Let's downgrade these down to about 80% thrust. That looks good. And let's put this out on the pad. Let's get there this time. <laughs> that would be ideal. I would really like it for Jeb to get the ability to hold prograde. That would be really convenient. Anytime you want to start pitching in on this process, Jeb, that would be nice. Unfortunately, Jeb doesn't want to start pitching in on this process. This is going to be a little bit of a long episode, but future episodes should start to go much easier once this pathfinding is done. Phenomenal. So up we go, and we're going to start our gravity turn here. There's a little bit of wiggling going on here. No doubt about that one. We're definitely picking up a little bit of a wiggle. So we're going to have to be pretty careful with this. Okay. For now, that's fine. As long as we are careful not to allow the wiggle to become a shimmy. If it does, this could go out of control. Yikes. And there it goes. See, that wiggles like that and it just completely bends. We were able to recover it, but that does cost us a fair amount of speed, and there it goes again. 
off to the other direction now. We're still getting altitude. But yeah, this bend is absolutely the problem here. Absolutely the problem. Yikes. We're barely able to control this thing at this point. So we need to redo these struts. That's very clear. The struts are the problem. What altitude do we get to there? Yeah, 18 kilometers. So you can see those that horizontal speed. That's the core issue. Absolutely. So we need to move these struts and we need to move them to be quad coupled. They need to be moved up like so. I need to decide on actual reversion rules. I've kind of been winging it. Actually, let's move them up to here. I have been winging it on reversion rules. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about the funding. I think funding is going to be absolutely fine. And funding is the main reason why reverting back would not would be a problem. And reverting does accelerate the iteration process. There's no doubt about that. So I think I'm going to allow it or I'm, I'm going to allow reverting under some circumstances. I need to figure out actual circumstances for that. That that would be an important thing. So I'll have that for next episode for sure. But for now, with just these struts up here, let's just get out of here. I'm going to take this pretty much straight up. We're not going to attempt to do too much of a gravity turn before we're at about 40 kilometers for our apoapsis. For right now, that's going to be important. But yeah, the, the main reason not to revert in previous series has just been because funding is a big focus of it. And honestly, in the space race, funding wasn't that big of a concern. At least in the early space race. Later on, eh. But in the early space race, not so much. So we see we're at an apoapsis right now of about 12 kilometers. We're just punching straight up right now. I'm just changing our ascent trajectory so that we don't have to deal with that nearly as much. And moving these struts will definitely have an effect as well. So we're at about 30 kilometer apoapsis. I just want to guarantee that we get into orbit this time. That would be absolutely great. 40 right there. Okay, so we're going to start heading on over. We don't want to enter into a tumble here, so I'm keeping it kind of cautious. We're at 70 kilometers right now. We're targeting a 100 kilometer orbit. So we're just going to park right here. We're gonna ditch those boosters. And now is when we're going to potentially see some pretty major wiggle issues. We'll see. We're just going to burn here until our apoapsis is 100 kilometers. So purely horizontal at this point. We're at 80 kilometers right now. And we do need to accelerate a decent amount here. But we've got quite a bit of delta V. So I'm not concerned about this one. I think we made it. That's 90 kilometers for our apoapsis. And that's 100. Perfect. So we're just going to be parked here for the moment. And once we hit this 100 kilometers, we can actually do a maneuver plan now. I forgot about that. Yeah, we can actually do this. So we would push this out to be about here. Oh, those early game tech constraints are something, aren't they? <laughs> no doubt about that. So we're going to get into orbit here for sure. And we'll have enough to return home. I'm 95% sure about that. We don't have to be in a circular orbit, to be clear. So, let's warp on forward here. We know when we want to start this burn, which is a little bit ago. There we go. Missed it by like 10 seconds, but that's fine. I'm not going to put us into a perfectly circular orbit. All we're looking to do here is barely squeak into orbit. Okay, just a little bit of additional thrust here. 48, 49, 50. Okay, that is officially in orbit. Beautiful, and we've got 800 meters per second to go. So, we did it. We're gonna grab our mystery goo observation, and in reality, Yuri Gagarin completed one orbit. 
before deorbiting. So we're going to add a maneuver here, and we're just going to warp around Kerbin. And we're going to grab whatever EVA reports. Nope, we're not. <laughs> okay. We're not going to grab that EVA report. We're going to grab whatever we can. Are we going to try to salvage this thing? I mean, we have to ditch it, actually, if we get credit here, though. We have to ditch it to get credit for the mission. So is there actually a point in grabbing these? Not really. We just warp around one orbit. Now, for these low orbit count early ones, we're going to go for the orbit numbers. Some of the later ones get crazy, like 88 orbits, and we're not going to bother with that. I'll just note how many orbits it was. So that'll be fine. We're going to hop around here. We complete our singular orbit, and then we get ourselves into position over here. SAS on. Phenomenal. And how are we doing on electric charge? We are fine. So we can actually grab this EVA report and transmit it back. Which is probably something that we should do. We'll transmit all the data that we can. Because this stuff is going to be lost. So we grab that. And we transmit that if we can. We're still transmitting. Okay. We'll transmit more data. And we'll grab this EVA report. Yeah, we definitely, we can grab all of the EVA report data, right? This is, this is full transmittable. That's Highlands. This is Mountains. We'll grab that, and we'll transmit that. Okay. Now we should return this. So we're going to bring this back, SAS on, and we're going to bring this on down, but we have to ditch this. So I'm going to bring this down to about 30 kilometers periapsis here. We have the fuel that we would be able to salvage this. If we so chose. We do not so choose because that's not what happened. In reality, the Vostok capsule was unrecoverable. There was no plan for recovery for it. So we're going to get into position here retrograde. That's very sensitive while we're in physics warp. Let's get, just get into position here. There we go. And let's bring this guy on down. Fantastic. We're definitely drifting off of the node here. I'm going to turn off SAS because we just want to hold retrograde. And aerodynamic forces will do that for us automatically. So that's fine. We could burn off a bunch of this horizontal speed if we really, really wanted to. But we see that our surface velocity is beginning to drop. Our periapsis is already down to 10 kilometers, right? So this is fine. This is absolutely okay. We are losing speed here. Now, I believe these were entirely ballistic re-entries and that they didn't burn anything at all once they were in the atmosphere. So we'll attempt to do the same. I think we'll get going slowly enough that Jeb can bail on out. And hopefully this will get us the science to make the other Vostok launchers a little bit more accurate. A little bit. Definitely do see that heating bar there. I'm keeping an eye on it. For the time being, it appears to be reasonably fine. Not too concerned about that one. And I believe they did go for land landings as well. So that's good. Now, again, Yuri Gagarin bailed out at 7 kilometers, so that's about what we're going to be angling for. We're continuing to slow down here, which is good. And we're definitely killing off that horizontal speed. Okay, so here we are at about 7 kilometers. We're going to EVA, and we're going to let go, and we're going to deploy shoot. Phenomenal. So that's going to go boom, and that is how that happened. I think that's a very strange choice, but whatever. Our chute will open up here relatively soon. We can grab this EVA report, but I don't think we actually recover it in any meaningful way. So we're going to make our way on down here, of course. We can cover a fair amount of land here, since these are, like, gliding chutes. That's definitely something that we can do, but we don't need to. We can just make our way right on down. Phenomenal. And in fact, I'm going to get us some additional vertical speed here. 
Okay, well, come out of physics warp. We're currently, like, a kilometer up. No, this is not real. We're currently, like, 100 meters up. Okay, we should probably work on bleeding off some of this speed. There's some of our horizontal speed gone there. Phenomenal. And we can get this turned on around and continue to bleed off some of this speed. There we go. Ish. These shoots work strangely. But there we go. Fantastic. Jebediah is safely on the ground doing his best Yuri Gagarin impression, and we will recover him. Fantastic. That was more trial and error than I had hoped, but now that we have that technology done, honestly, the Mercury flights are going to be kind of easy in, in comparison. <laughs> So we'll get those going in the next episode. We do need to get our pay for Vostok 1, so we'll get 250,000 here. And honestly, I'm going to I'm going to round that down. I'm going to round that down to 200,000 from here on out just so that I don't have to click 50 times. <laughs> Excellent. I I don't want to have to click 50 times. So we're going to get 200,000 for those from now on. That's fine. So we'll grab that magnificent and that is vostok one completed you can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes comments subscribes and bell ringings and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible including als gamer shadow wolf andy magar spartan news nick smarty dimitri h punching the microphone soccerman 12 uk kentogan and all the rest and of course you thank you for watching if you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.